This video, we're going to prove the following fact. If G is a group and H and K are subgroups of finite index in G, then H intersect K itself is a finite index in G. Before we can prove this, we need to prove a lemma. So let me state the lemma and let me prove it. The lemma states the following. It says that H intersect K, and since H and K are subgroups, then H intersect K is a subject, subgroup. The lemma says that H intersect K times A, where A is a member of G, is HA intersect KA. And this is for all A and G. The proof. Well, this is the set and this is the set. We have to show containment in both sides. So let X be in H intersect K times A. Well, this implies that X is, say, M times A, where M is an element in H intersect K. M is in here. Okay, well, let's see. This implies that X, which is MA, is in H. H A, excuse me, and X, which equals M A, is in K A. Well, if it's in both M A and K A, that means X is an element of H A intersect K A. I started off with X in here. I concluded that X is in there. That means that everything in H intersect times A is a subset of H A intersect K A. Now we need to show containment the other way. Let X be in here. Now let X be in H A intersect K A. Well, that implies that X is equal to H A for some A, well, let's say it the longer way. X is a member or an element of H A and X is an element of K sub A. Based on this, X is equal to H A, and based on this, X is equal to K A for some H in H, and little k in subgroup K. But since H equals this and H equals that, that implies H A is equal to K A. But by the cancellation law, that implies that H is equal to K, which implies that H is in H intersect K, and for completeness, K is also in H intersect K. Well, this implies that X, which is H A, and that's a subset or an element in H intersect K. That's where H, little h lives, times A. Well, we sh started off with X being in this intersection, and we concluded that, or I should say that set, now we concluded X is in that set. So that means everything in H A intersect K A is a subset of H intersect K times A. Uh, 
call this up here star call this down here double star well star and double star implies that it, let's say it the other way that h intersect k times a is actually equal to h a times k a now this is important to understand this clearly is a right coset of h intersect k but it equals this anything that looks like this is a right coset of h intersect k now we are told that h and k are a finite index in G. So now we're ready. So the lemma has been proven. Now we're ready to prove the main fact. Just want to make sure if I call the factor theorem. Okay. Now H is is of finite index in G implies that G is equal to say HA1 HA2 up to HAM where A1 A2 up to A sub M they all live in G okay the union of those sets, those right cosets, make up G. Same thing with K. K is of finite index, and G implies that G is equal to KB1. KB2 all the way up to KBN. These are the right cosets of G that cover G. In fact, there's no duplication in this set or in that set. Okay, now let little g be okay so little g it okay let little g be in g now g is an element of hg and g is an element of kg that implies that G is an element of HG intersect KG. And this here is a coset in a coset of H intersect K. Because it equals this. We just proved that. But more importantly, it's this. But now G is in H A sub I for some I equal 1, 2, up to M. Where did this come from? All of these subsets make up G. G is in one of these. Likewise, G is in one of those N right cosets of K. G is in KBJ for some J equal 1 to up to N. This implies that G is an element of this intersection of two right cosets, one from H and one from K. But remember, this 
is the same as HG and this here is the same as KG and the reason is because if G is in H times G and G is in H times A sub I those two sub those two cosets are the same two cosets are either they have an empty intersection or they're exactly the same and since G little g is in both of these right cosets those two right cosets must be equal and likewise since G is an element of the right coset KG and G is also an element of the right coset K B sub J that means that this coset here and this coset there are equal so I just renamed this as HG and this as KG okay. so what does this say now every element in G remember G little g was arbitrarily chosen every element in G can be written like this well there are m choices for a sub i and our n choices for b sub j and choices for b sub j that is there are mn choices for hai intersect kbj but remember that's a right coset so at most the order of H intersect K is I should say let's not say at most so the order of H intersect K is less than or equal to MN is less than or equal to MN because for every G for every G for every G in G I can find a right coset that contains G using just these cosets one from here and one from here the intersection and that completes the proof in fact we did a little bit more we showed an upper limit for the order of H intersect K not only is it finite but it's no more than M times N if you like watching videos like this seriously consider subscribing to my channel please click the like button leave a comment tell your friends family members and enemies about my channel see you guys in the next video watch and learn